Hey friends, I hope you're having a great day. Today I wanted to share with you what's in my pack. In the interest of time, it's not going to be every single item that I pack on a backpacking trip, but rather my top 10 gear items. Pieces that have proven to be tried and true over the years and gone on just about every trip with me or ones that are fairly new that I've been thoroughly impressed with and have become my new go-to. Now because we're keeping this kind of short and sweet, I'm not going to go into all of the specs and features and things like that for each item here, but if you do want more of those informational details rather than anecdotal, please go check out the blog post that I wrote to go along with this topic. The link to it will be in the description. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get into my top 10 staple gear items, starting with my pack. This is the Osprey Levity 60, and it is the male version. The female version is the Lumina. Because it's a fixed torso length without any adjustment, uh, I have to go with the men's small because the women's small is just too short and women's medium is too long. And so I just go with that pack. I explained all this in the review that I did for this pack a while back. And uh, I still have nothing but praise for it. It comes in at like 1.98 pounds. So pretty much two pounds. Overall, the fit is just so comfortable from the spongy foam that they use for the shoulder straps to the hip belt. Even this trampoline style back panel, the gap here allows for great ventilation. And within my first couple trips with the levity, oh my goodness, I noticed right away if I was starting to work up a sweat while I was hiking and a breeze would blow through, I could actually feel the cool air on my back. And that was something that I never noticed with that feature on my previous pack that they said, you know, the feature would actually do. Another thing is the way that they have allotted the capacity in this pack. I feel like I've got so much room. Most of the time I pack an entire three days worth of gear and I still have extra room. Like I'm cinching down the pack so that everything is not moving around inside. I feel like I'm getting a true 60 liters of space. Whereas using a different model pack that was 65 liters, I always felt like the pack was bursting at the seams. That has never been the case with the Levity. I always feel like I have plenty of room. Second item is the Big Agnes Fly Creek 2. And I have the bike pack version. Now I don't keep my tent in its original stuff sack. I prefer using this stuff sack I got on AliExpress. Uh, it's the kind of bag that the Lanshan trekking pole tent comes in. I've just found it works way better for packing up this tent than the original bag. So that's what's up here. This tent is the older version. It is not the new solution die. I bought this, I want to say four years ago. So this is the gray and kind of yellow orange color model. And they say it's a two person tent. It is a one person and a dog or one person who loves their space type of tent. I tried to share this tent with my husband on a couple occasions and it was so cramped. We could not sleep in it comfortably. So this tent has been my solo adventure tent and my adventuring with the dogs tent. I personally love having the front entrance, just that single door on my tent. I've tried a variety of styles from trekking pole tent to uh, double doors or side entry doors. I just love the front entry style of the Fly Creek. That just works for me. The other thing is this little tent is so lightweight. I can get it to just under two and a half pounds. I've taken this tent on dozens of adventures across North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, even Virginia, and just this past year had to start patching it. I got some holes in the floor, but that's okay. It gives it character. Next up is my sleeping pad, the Nemo Tensor. I got this the same time as my tent. So again, this is not the newest version of this gear item. 
It's about four years old, and so it has the old R value. I want to say it's like 3.2 or 3.5. It's not the upgraded 4. Point whatever R value. This pad is the only one that I personally have been able to sleep on comfortably. I really like the space frame baffle design. And so if I'm sleeping on my side, I don't wake up with shoulder and hip pain. I can also sleep comfortably on my back and not have lower back pain. That's just uh, me and what works for me. I know some people have probably tried this pad and gotten a terrible night's sleep, but uh, I really love the design of it and have gotten great sleep on it. So that's just what I use. The one thing though that is the kind of criticism or con is over time I have noticed that the insulation that mylar film has degraded. When I first got the pad like four years ago I could comfortably sleep on it in 40 even 30 degree temperatures and I've noticed in the last six months to a year that it's not the same. I get cold spots now and it's not nearly as comfortable in those temperatures as it used to be. Now we move on to the sleeping bag. This is the Mountain Hardware Bishop Pass 30 degree women's bag. And my husband has the 30 degree men's bag, which I will show you kind of the size comparison. You can see there's quite a bit more length on the men's bag than the women's. And also the temperature rating is a little bit different. I've found that the limit being close to 20 is pretty accurate. The lowest I've camped with this bag is the mid 20s. When paired with an extra wool base layer, I have found that I can kind of push the limit a little bit lower than 30. With this bag, the sweet spot for staying comfortable is between 30 and 50. Anything higher than 50 is overkill and I find myself like sweating bullets. I've been testing out a quilt recently and I keep finding myself coming back to this sleeping bag. It is just so versatile and I've used it in so many conditions and had such consistent results with it. Whereas the quilt I've been trying out, not so much. It's kind of inconsistent and it's a gamble as to whether or not I will stay warm. And the Bishop Pass has performed excellent in my experience on the trail. So that is why it is like my staple item. I pack it for just about every trip. Items five and six have to do with my cook kit. We have the Tokes 900 milliliter pot. This weighs only four and a half ounces. Uh, I was using a kettle for a while, but I found that I needed a pot that I could nest a canister in, and there's limits to a kettle. I wanted to still be able to cook out of my pot from time to time, and so that is why I went with this option. It's still very lightweight, but has a lot more functionality. A few things I love about it, I already mentioned I can nest a fuel canister in here, as well as my stove a bandana, matches, a lighter, you name it. Pretty much my whole cook kit fits into this. And I don't know about you, but I do not boil just two cups of water at camp. That's kind of the standard stove test. How fast can it boil two cups of water? I need a whole liter. I want enough water to make my dinner, have a cup of tea, wash my face, maybe have a second cup of tea. So the capacity, the 900 milliliters is perfect. And I don't have to keep going back to the stove to boil more and more. You get the idea. Now we move on to the stove. I do not have a fancy stove. I have this little $15 stove I bought on Amazon the same time as my tent and my sleeping pad. So this thing has been used and abused for about four years now. I've tried several different styles of stoves and even brands of canister stoves like this and always find myself coming back to this one when the other one fails in some way or proves to be way too inconvenient I find myself wishing I had just packed this guy instead of trying something new 
And I've even tried the uh, Soto Amicus stove, which got pretty good reviews. And that one did not like cold weather. It crapped out on me in like 25 degrees. This one I took to the URIs recently and the temperatures were exactly the same. And it did not pitch a fit or tantrum or anything. It performed perfectly fine. It's just one of those budget pieces of gear that I've been really impressed by. They do say, you know, if you buy cheap, you buy twice because, you know, the quality is going to be lacking, it'll fall apart, uh, or it just won't perform well. That has not been the case. This thing has uh, exceeded its $15 value, okay? I feel like it's performed to the same level as a $50 or $60 stove. When it does finally kick the bucket, I'll probably just go on Amazon and order the exact same one again. Next up is my water filter. I was using a Sawyer Squeeze and from time to time the Sawyer Mini, but I kept having problems with those. They kept failing on me in one way or another, so I decided to give this one a try. It is the Hydro Blue Versa, and it is missing the other little thing on this side. I lost it on the art lobe, uh, and so I'll have to order a replacement. They're supposed to be an identical one on the other side. The number one thing I love about this filter is the little window. You can see what's going on inside. And with Sawyer filters, you can't. You're just kind of going off of, you know, is the water running clear? And sometimes it's not as clean as it could be just because the water is clear. There's been times in which I've back flushed or cleaned this one out and seen that the water's clear, but there are still some pretty hefty pieces of debris in there. So I take some extra time to really flush those out. And then I'm a little bit more confident with how clean my filter is and the flow rate is significantly better. The other thing is it has that 28 millimeter threading on both sides. And because of that, I've kind of changed my mind a little about the smart water bottle. If you saw my video about backpacking mistakes and the whole just like what you're gonna like. I talked about how I hate using smart water bottles, especially with the water filter I was using, the Sawyer Squeeze. This filter has changed my mind a little bit about it because I can easily attach a smart water bottle to one end and a water bladder to the other end and let it just work like a gravity system. I'm not fumbling around trying to get the water to filter into the tiny opening of the smart water bottle and I don't need an extra attachment to make that possible. So I like that it's already built in with those threadings on each side and it makes it just more versatile, more convenient for me to filter water. I still love my Nalgene bottle, but I'm not as opposed to taking smart water bottles and filtering that way. The next two items are technology related. First is the Petzl Bindi. This is my little headlamp that I've switched to. And instead of a really thick, chunky headband, you've got this tiny shock cord with a locking mechanism on the end so you can tighten and loosen it. And this thing is small, but it has some serious brightness. It's got three settings, low, medium, and high. And the high setting is pretty bright. It also has, I don't know if you can see that, let me turn it on and off again, uh, this little light will shine green, yellow, or red to let you know about how much power is left on it. So I really like that indicator instead of just guessing and hoping that it's got a few more hours in it, I can have some kind of indication of, oh, it's yellow, I should probably conserve light or yeah, it's red, I definitely need to charge this thing. And I really don't have much else to say other than it's small, it's lightweight, it does what it's supposed to do, and that's what I like about it. Next technology related thing is my power bank. I thought about making it my camera, but this guy plays a pretty big role behind the scenes. He's the one keeping the camera charged and rolling when it comes to my trips. So this is a 10,000 milliamp hour bank and I got it from Walmart. It is nothing too fancy or special. It is a little bit heavier, but it's reliable and it does have the claimed capacity. 
unlike a very popular item nowadays, the Nightcore, um, I tested that thing out and it was dead after the first night. With this bank, I can typically get my phone charged from 50% to 100 twice and four, sometimes five GoPro batteries from zero to 100, which is some pretty serious juice. I charged my phone once on the Nightcore battery and one GoPro battery and it was dead. So it definitely does not have that 10,000 capacity that's claimed, at least in my experience and a handful of reviews that I found saying the same thing. Those users guessed that it was about five or 6,000, which is a huge discrepancy. Thankfully on that trip, I did bring this as a backup and so the day was saved. Footage could still be taken on the trip and all my devices were not left dead. The last item is one of my favorites and that's mostly because it has sentimental value. That is my sit pad. And this is the Climate V seat. This is about the size of it blown up. If you're wondering like, why does a sit pad have sentimental value? <laughs> it's because it was a surprise gift. So my husband gets this men's subscription box every couple months and there was one month in which it had camping gear and this along with a few trinkets were included in it and although he knew he had no use for it he thought I would love it and so he went ahead and ordered it and then surprised me with it and so I've been using this sit pad on like every trip ever since it has been such a convenient and nice little lightweight luxury item. It's also super durable. I've sat on a variety of surfaces with it and Barrett and Nora have even trampled on it a couple times on accident getting in and out of the tent and it has yet to develop any holes or leaks. I just love this pad. It was a sweet gift. It's super functional and it's one of my staple gear items. So that kind of concludes what's in my pack, at least for the top 10 staple items. I hope you enjoyed this video. Once again, please go check out that blog post for even more information about each gear item. Nothing here is sponsored. It is all just gear items I use and have been really impressed with over the years. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I can't wait to see you again next time. Tracing my footsteps through the wind Back to a place where I could begin Where do I go? Where do I go? And if we carry on, my friends We can make it to the end I just don't Don't go hiking. No, that's not an option.